So we saw how we can divide the keyboard up in terms of pitch, assign different sounds to different keys. We can also divide your keyboard in terms of velocity, so you would trigger a different audio file depending on how hard you hit the key. So to do that, we need to go to the View menu and View Velocity Range. It's over here on the right, so let me slide this over. There's a switch for it, so we want to be sure that it's on both of our samples. And let's set 0 to 63. I can actually double click in here and type 63. And then double click in here and type 64 to 127. So now I want to switch back to full range for both sounds. And I see that I have velocity layers down here. This sound will handle a velocity that's low. And this sound will handle a velocity that's high. Let's see if we can make that happen. So here's a low velocity, and here's a harder velocity. So now we have one crash for hard hits and the other crash for softer hits. Now in that view menu, there's also a command for loop. If that's checked, let me check it for both. So I'll hold this down. And when it gets to the end, it plays again. So one shot and loop are sort of in conflict with one another. It can't just play it to the end if it's going to loop it. Now to save this symbol, you can go to the instrument menu on this page, save or save as, or you can use the main page and go to the options menu here and save instrument as. When you make a new instrument, EXS assigns some random number to it. So we wouldn't want to name this instrument number 1982. We would have no idea what was in instrument 1982. Okay, so let me close this window. I don't really want to save that. And let's go to the Bosendorfer we looked at earlier and bring up the page for that. So let me close this window, move this window over here, and Let's go to the edit page for this piano. Bring this up here. And we see lots of tiles down here, which means that there are multiple velocity assignments for each key. And then a softer one. And a harder one. So we have here both concepts. Sounds that are assigned to a particular group of keys and sounds that are assigned to particular velocities for those keys. So let's take a look at where things are stored. If I go to Instrument and I save as, I haven't actually made any changes to this. But let's pretend I was going to save it. It's in Sampler Instruments. And if I hold down the Command key, I can see that it's at the user level in a folder called Music, Audio Music Apps, and Sampler Instruments. And this will save a .exs file, which is small, around 100k. And really all it's remembering is, go find this sound and put it on this key with these settings over here. The samples are actually saved in a folder called Samples. So one approach to EXS is to assemble audio files in such a way that they authentically recreate an instrument. That's what we've done here with this piano. And we can also use the EXS for sound design to take ordinary sounds and do creative things with them. And we'll see that in a later chapter.